Hello everyone, welcome to Linux Automations. So uh, in my previous video, I have mentioned that I'm going to make some series of videos on Docker with respect to command line interface. And to this con to that continuation, so I'm starting that particular uh, video series. So today we're going to talk about a very basic introduction about what is a Docker. And before to that, actually you need to understand uh, what is a virtual machine. So in earlier days, we used to have uh, a virtual technology which we're using and that particular technology um, is going to be a, an issue in certain cases uh, uh, in very particular, or I can mention that if you are from some kind of middleware background or database background, so that definitely you have, you have faced an issue uh, that your application or database is not performing well because your host operating system may, may not be uh, configured properly. So it always has a dependency and uh, you know, which could cause an issue. And in some cases, that if you are a middleware engineer, so you, are, uh, you, you probably take the code from lawyer environments and you try to keep it in the higher environment so the things may not, might not work because you miss up something, you know, so doing some configuration and things like that. And you have uh, hundreds and thousands of nodes out there so which you need to uh, deploy your application, so which is going to be a difficult part. Now here, uh, Docker is going to be providing a solution over there. And even, so we can talk about a lot of disadvantages even with the virtual machine that I can tell like, you know, so if you see the diagram actually, so there you have an architecture of a virtual machine. So usually probably having a hardware, so which is server. And on top of that, you are going to install a hyper, uh, which is a operating system to drive the hardware. And on top of that, you are going to install a software, which is a hypervisor software. And now hypervisor software will help you in emulating a new hardware. And due to that, you can create a new virtual machines, which is um, again, you have to install a again guest operating system on top of that. And that operating system, you need to install some binaries and in usually some softwares. And on top of that, you can deploy some application. So this is how, you know, so your virtual machine is um, architecture is designed basically or it is how it works but whereas you understand the situation there uh, if one guest operating system went down so definitely your application is going to get impacted so that's not a your issue so that could be uh, an operating system issue so but still you got affected over there so why to why to be in such situation so uh, why can't your application so in such case okay so you had to uh, you know you have to bring up the application somewhere else which is going to be a bit uh, difficult part now that is one situation and assume so you have a hypervisor host operating system and there is a probably a potential chance that you know so you cannot say like uh, your uh, um, electronic devices when to when it will work and when it will get uh, you know um, get into panic mode so assume like your server has been you know into a downtime your virtual machines has to be uh, you know migrated from your one machine to another machine so which requires a lot of efforts or even you have to put a lot of uh, uh, investment to buy such products which can allow you to migrate the vms from one machine to another machine and even you should have a common storage in between the other server where you are trying to migrate and even the other server which you are trying to migrate also should have the resources where it can adjust your virtual machines so all these concerns okay uh, you know, so we we are actually struggling with virtual uh, machines and uh, so all of a sudden so or not all of a sudden actually it's been uh, almost a decade the people are working on um, you know containerization technologies and google is the first company as well known in the market that who has uh, completely so maintaining their data center with uh, Con uh, almost like running with containers okay so today we're uh, as i mentioned so we I just understood what are the disadvantages you had with virtual machine now coming to the container so container is a completely different approach you can call it as a mini virtual machine but it's it's not the way actually virtual machine works here uh, you don't need to um, you know create a new uh, virtual machine on top of that you don't need to install any um, you know guest OS along with binaries you're just going to um, you know create a container and container definitely is going to have some binaries which is required on top of that you can run your application or database and there is no limitation in virtual machine you have a limitation where you can create virtual machines uh, depends upon your hardware and in what in containerization so definitely there is a threshold but not the way like how your virtual machine is being uh, you know having a threshold in terms of resources so here uh, with containers so definitely you can optimize the resources you can 100 percent utilize the resources properly with containers and even if one machine goes down so there are some 
container managers orchestration tools which can help to migrate or to get the uh, containers to be created on somewhere inside some other server automatically so without any um, uh, without any major downtime so that's how uh, you have uh, a container technology so containers are uh, uh, are usually being um, I mean to say like you know are being provided by uh, two ways so one is well known at least well known so one is Alexi so Alexi is the one so uh, which is a containerization technology but doesn't been used much in the market but definitely so docker containers are the one which are widely used so hope you have understood like the basic idea of what are the ad disadvantages you have your with your virtual machine and what are the advantages what you are going to gain with a container so with container at least with docker with respect if you talk about so i'm going to create one image so that means i'm trying to configure only one time and wherever i want i just use it okay so no need of reconfigurations and things like that and even no need of deployments whatever you do so it's all everything we have done it one time and you just you know uh, use it wherever you want and that's all for this particular video okay so thank you very much so in the next video which we are going to talk about how do we install uh, docker and after that we'll talk about the series of docker commands thank you so we'll continue with the next series of commands